Welcome back to Regina 120. This is Jeff Clint again, uh, giving you a, another video on something that I think that you should know because I had to pay for it. So I might as well uh, give it to you now that I've got it. So uh, the, the and this is about take three, but uh, the going th this video kind of goes back uh, quite a few years. And so I was at one point in about grade three or four, maybe even earlier, uh, where they would, uh, or the teacher would give a, a problem of a series of numbers. And a series of numbers would be something simple like one, two, three, four, and we'd have to guess the next number in the series from the sequence. Easy enough. Makes sense. Uh, but in my m young mind at the time, I looked at this sequence of numbers, numbers right? and uh, Thank you very much. the uh, I, I, I could tell that there was uh, a n or depending which uh, list of numbers you would have, uh, usually a way to, to make an argument about which number came next. And so the, the it, in my mind, because there, there was no real true answer which number came next, uh, it wasn't clear to uh, that there, you could give an honest answer to that particular question. And so uh, I would often refuse to give an answer to those sorts of questions and would be penalized for it. And so let's take a look at a related problem that might make clear whether or not there is an answer to this kind of problem. That the idea here is polynomial interpolation, and your, the goal here is to give a set of points, uh, or you're, you're given a set of points, very similar to how you're given a set of numbers uh, in the original cut kind of problem. So let's take a look at an example set of points. So if you get one one, one or two two, three three. And so really what you're doing is you're, you're making a list of three numbers with index as the first number, or, or the, the, the number of the number, the, the, the identification of where in the series that number is. And then followed by, as the uh, y value, the value of that number in that sequence. And so for these three numbers, you could view them as the first number, one, second number, two, the third number, three. And there would be a, 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 a polynomial that you could produce, in this case a line, that goes through each of these three points and suggests a fourth point somewhere on this line, or, or somewhere on this polynomial, which again just happens to be a line, uh, what that number might be. But if you're paying attention, you could note that this isn't the only polynomial that could go through these three points. Uh, you probably encountered polynomials of various order uh, before. So for these three points, you could, as we did in the, the previous example, uh, follow the, the same linear polynomial, or you could put a point, perhaps one, point below. And you would get something that would be of the form px to the fourth plus qx to the three plus rx to the second plus sx plus t. You know, you could find or, or at least approximate uh, those, those values for this particular curve. But you can see that this curve also goes through your original points. And you can make one of these curves for any point in the, the real number line, i.e. The, any, any, any y value. Uh, so again, your, your initial points are, are really just defining 
or, or defined by your original set of numbers, but the next number can be any number. Uh, and it still defines a valid curve that makes predictions or, or makes uh, or a claim of which number follows this series of numbers. So that's one way of looking at this. The other way of looking at this is in terms of computer programs themselves. Now I haven't gotten into the details of how to make these kinds of uh, programs in general, uh, but rest assured that if you are given a set of three numbers, you can write a program that generates a fourth number from them. For any three numbers. And based on the program that you write, this program may be complicated or it may be simple. Uh, if, if there is a pattern to find, uh, and if the, the pattern is very simple, uh, this program won't necessarily be very long. Uh, you can learn about what kinds of programs produce the next value and how long they are, how complex they are, and it's worth looking into how different patterns and different ways of generating the next number uh, produce programs of different lengths and different complexities. Uh, this is a useful topic to, to dig into. I'm not going to go very deep into it now, but it, it's worth knowing about. Uh, and the other thing, too, Whether you generate that fourth number using a polynomial or a computer program, uh, it's sometimes use or it, it, it sometimes gives you more useful predictions than others. So if you start with a bunch of points and your polynomial predicts a very high value at the end, but if you're series of data is just a really noisy line, that isn't very useful to you. So uh, there are, because there are different ways of generating the, the next number in your series, uh, it, it's worth keeping in mind what range your data is valid on. Uh, this can also occur, of course, with programs as well. But if you generate a program to, to predict the next value, your, your program can be accurate or can be not accurate on different ranges. The other thing worth, worth pointing out is that uh, this problem does come up in practice uh, when, when doing empirical science in, in general, uh, but the data tends not to be uh, as clean as 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so you're, you're probably going to get numbers, uh, or your, your program is going to get, get numbers or get data in a numerical format, uh, and you're going to have to deal with them and make predictions of the next number. And it's a, a common enough task. Uh, but you're probably not going to get anything as simple as one, two, three, four. At least often. Um, the other uh, thing worth pointing out is that this doesn't necessarily have to be a polynomial function. Uh, that's probably the easiest to do math uh, and to, to produce. Um, I'm not going to go into the details at this time, but you could, with some thinking, uh, produce something very similar with the exponential function the log function and a sum a series uh, of them, uh, or, or other functions as well. And so hopefully, this makes it clear that uh, yes, for any uh, sequence of numbers that you are given, uh, there is going to be an infinite number of possible answers that can follow it. but. Because the, the complexity of each answer is different, uh, there will be some answers that are more plausible than others. It, again, it's worth uh, digging into this, this complexity and learning about it, uh, but that is a matter for another video. So hopefully you enjoy. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.